Hello, hello, hello. The last problem of this academic year. The reason why I will stop after this one until early September is that the number of viewers is going down rapidly, which is often the case in July and August. And so I will start again with bi-weekly physics problems, probably the first week of September. I will continue every week, by the way, with my art quizzes. So this problem will be all about the lunar, the lunar eclipse that is coming up the night of July 27 to 28. It's going to be spectacular because it's going to be one of the longest total lunar eclipses ever. It's going to be seen almost in every country of the world, except the United States and Canada. Perfect for India. But it can also be seen in South America, Japan, Australia, China, all over Europe. South Africa, perfect. The totality will start in Delhi. I just take Delhi as one example at 1 a.m. of July 28 and the totality will end at 2.43 a.m. that night. So the totality will last 1.7 hours. That is enormous. The theoretical maximum ever possible I think is very close to two hours. So this one is very unique. In India the problem will be that it's in the middle of the monsoon system, so you may be clouded out and you may see nothing. In Europe, when the sun rises, it will already be partially eclipsed or even totally eclipsed. But you will still get a fair share of the totality. What is so beautiful about the totality? Place yourself on the moon and look at the earth. If the moon is totally eclipsed, no matter where you are on the moon, you will not be able to see the sun. You see the earth is blocking the light from the sun. So the sun is behind the moon. Sorry. The sun is behind the earth. Now, if you remember Rayleigh scattering, the blue light in the atmosphere, the blue light from the sun, is scattered in the atmosphere out. And the only color of the sunlight that will be able to get through the earth atmosphere is the red light. So if you stand on the moon, you will see around the earth, which is totally dark, you will see a red ring, which is the result of Rayleigh scattering in the earth's atmosphere. Now, it means that the moon is now illuminated with a very faint but red light. So when you on Earth look at the totality of the Moon, the Moon looks reddish. That is a remarkable thing. So you are actually looking at light that came from behind you because you are on the Earth through the Earth's atmosphere reaching the Moon. Because no one on the Moon can then see the Sun. When we see a total lunar eclipse, if you are on the moon at that moment of time, you will not see the sun. For you that will be a solar eclipse. I have written down here some numbers which 
you will have to use to do the problem. The sun, distant Earth sun, is about maximum possible. Remember that the Earth orbit is an ellipse and the distance between farthest away and closest to the sun is about 3 or 4 percent. The moon is also in an elliptical orbit around the Earth. The distance between its largest distance and its shortest, smallest distance is much larger. It's about 14 percent. It so happens that in July, both the moon is almost as far as the way as it ever is, <laughs> and so is the sun. So we call that largest the possible distance for the sun aphelion. And for the moon we call it apogee. So this is the distance between Earth and Moon close to apogee. We use this for the radius of the Sun, this for the radius of the Earth. I know that the radius is a little larger at the equator than it is at the poles. That's because of the rotation of the Earth. It's not an exact sphere, but it's close enough. So we'll take this at its radius. The radius of the moon is about 3.7 times smaller. The time from full moon to full moon is 29.53 days. Even though it takes the moon only 27.3 days to go around the Earth, but keep in mind the Earth moves in its orbit. So for the situation to be full moon again, and believe me, <laughs> during a total lunar eclipse, the moon is as full as it can possibly be, think about that. That time is longer than the 27.32 days. Let me take you to the moon for now. So you and I are standing on the moon. And we look at the Earth. And with these numbers here, you can calculate the angle, the angular size of the Earth, and you can calculate the angular size of the Sun. And if you do your calculations correctly, I hope I did, then you will find that the angular size of the Earth is about a little less than 3.5 times larger than the angular size of the Sun. So. Here is the Earth. Now you think it's a piece of cardboard. No, it's the Earth. And here is the Sun. And these sizes are according to the ratio that I just mentioned to you. So this represents the angular size of the Sun, and this is the angular size, the way you see it projected onto the sky if you're standing on the Moon. And so, When the sun is here, you and I, wherever we stand on the moon, see a total solar eclipse. And it's not until the sun comes out that the total solar eclipse for us will end. Does it mean if we stand on the moon and for us the sun is here, does it mean that everyone else on the moon will also see total solar eclipse? No, no, not necessarily. Um, it may take a little bit more time for, the, for all people on the moon to see a solar eclipse. And that's what our problem today will be about. But for you and me, if we pick one rotation on the moon, then we will see the beginning of totality to the end of totality will be, I think I calculated to be about 2.5 hours. Oh, 2 hours and 48 minutes. Okay. Now, how often do we see a total lunar eclipse? This here 
is the plane, the orbital plane of the Earth, and we call that the ecliptic. I put at the center here the Earth itself. So that means that the Sun, the sun moves in the ecliptic in this plane. One year around. This is the location of the Earth. And this is the size of the orbit of the Moon. So the Earth is here at the center, and this is the lunar orbit which I have made circular, which is a good approximation. This, in my scale, is 80 millimeters. To find the Sun, which is somewhere in this plane, you have to go 30 meters from this point. This is the Sun. This is the Earth itself here at my finger. The Earth itself has a diameter of only 3 millimeters. This is 80 millimeters, and the Sun is away from this point 30 meters. Now, suppose the lunar orbit is also in the ecliptic. Then we would see a total lunar eclipse every 29.53 days. Because every 29.53 days there will be a moment that the Earth, the Moon and the Sun are lined up. No matter where the Sun is, that will always happen once in 29.53 days. And so the Earth will then be blocking the Sun to the Moon, and so every 29.53 days we would have a lunar, total lunar eclipse. But that's not the case. And the reason why that's not the case is that the orbit of the Moon makes an angle of 5.4 degrees with the ecliptic. Now, so the moon, so the Earth is at the center, keep that in mind. The Earth is here, and the moon goes around like this, at an angle of 5.4 degrees. The only way there can be a total lunar eclipse is when the sun is 30, 30 meters away in this direction. The Earth is here and the Moon is there. There can also be a total lunar eclipse when the Sun is here, 30 meters away, when the Earth is here and the Moon is there. I have looked up the past five or six lunar eclipses. You can look at many more, of course. The first one that I looked at was August 7, 2017, and then the last one was July 16, 2019, next year. Maybe not all the lunar eclipses were total, but there was a lunar eclipse, partial or total. And the difference in time between two lunar eclipses was 177 days. What that tells you is that it takes the sun 177 days to go from 30 meters away in this direction to this direction. If the sun is here, and the Moon is here, there is a total eclipse, or a partial eclipse. If the Sun is here, and the Earth is here, and the Moon is there, there is again eclipse. So it means that, in principle, 
you could have a lunar eclipse half a year apart. 177 days, I rounded them off a little, that will only happen if in the 177 days the moon goes around the earth with an integer number of times. Because only then will it be back at the same location for full moon. Well, 177 days is 6.0 and this number. So it means that if you have a, the sun is there, Earth is here, Moon is there, that it goes around six times, ends up here, that is six times because we go from full Moon to full Moon, six times from full Moon to full Moon, and the sun is here, and you get again an eclipse. So all those that I checked were 177 days apart, which is what we predict. Maybe not all of them will always be there, but in principle they could be 177 days apart. Another thing that you can learn from this simple model is that suppose the Sun is there, the Moon is here and the Earth is here, and you see a total lunar eclipse or partial lunar eclipse. Now, the moon moves and moves and in that... So, as I just said, interesting thing is that if we have a lunar eclipse, that means the Earth is here, the moon is there and the sun is 30 meters away there, then since the moon moves, perhaps about two weeks later, perhaps we can then have a solar eclipse as seen from the Earth, because now the moon is between us and the sun. Well, of course, since this takes about 15 days, in those 15 days the sun will have moved. If you do your geometry correctly and you take into account the fact that the orbit of the Moon is only 5 degrees different from the ecliptic, you can then convince yourself that in principle you could see a solar eclipse about 2 weeks, 15 days before a lunar eclipse and or 15 days after a lunar eclipse, for reasons that I just mentioned. I looked at uh, some of the recent solar eclipses. Remember, they're partial eclipses, but they are nevertheless eclipses. Remember, on January 31st this year, there was a total lunar eclipse. Fifteen days later, on February 15th, there was a partial solar eclipse. On July 27 we will see our spectacular lunar eclipse. Well, two weeks earlier, on July 13, there was a partial solar eclipse. And two weeks after, on August 11, again there will be a partial solar eclipse. And now you understand why. That partial eclipse, about 40% maximum on August 11, you will not be able to see, not in the United States and not in India, but you can see it if you live somewhere in Siberia or maybe uh, parts of uh, the Antarctic. Now comes the problem. If we stand on the moon and we look at the Earth blocking the sun, and we stand at one particular location, then, as I mentioned earlier, 
in the most ideal case, you will probably see a solar eclipse for about 2 hours and 50 minutes. That's ideal. But I want to know for how long the eclipse is total. That means that every person, every lunatic that stands on the moon <laughs> will see a solar eclipse. And for that I will have to know what the diameter is of the umbra, that is the shadow of the Earth at the location of the Moon. And this is the location of the Moon. I want you to calculate that diameter. It's a circular cross-section, of course, because the Earth is a sphere. And I want to know that in thousands of kilometers with four digit precision. If you know that diameter in thousands of kilometers, and you know the size of the moon, you can also figure out how many times in an ideal case the moon would fit in that umbra. I'm not asking you to calculate that, but that follows immediately, of course. So all I want to know is the diameter of the umbra. If you are in that umbra and you look at the sun, you won't see it because the earth is blocking you. Anywhere in that umbra, no matter who that is, you will see total solar eclipse. And if the moon is anywhere, the total moon is anywhere in that umbra. Any person who would look at the sun standing on the moon will see a total solar eclipse. Okay, so that's the problem. four-digit precision. I hope that most of you will be able to see the lunar eclipse on July 27. I won't, because it can be seen from Canada and not from the United States. Please do send me some messages on my YouTube channel about whether you actually saw part of it, whether you may even have seen the totality, and above all, of course, whether you saw when the moon was totally eclipsed, this beautiful, mysterious red color, which is the result of Rayleigh scattering in the Earth's atmosphere. If you've never seen a total lunar eclipse, it will probably be something that you will remember for the rest of your life. I have seen many total lunar eclipses. So, it's uh, not so bad that I will miss this one. And I hope that the sky will break in India. Because from India, for most parts of India, the total eclipse will last 1.7 hours. Which is close to the theoretical maximum. The theoretical maximum would be if the moon moves straight through the center of the shadow of the Earth, of the umbra. That would be about two hours then. 1.7 hours is very close. So, I'll go off the air with bi-weekly physics problems until maybe late in August. I'll probably post another one Oh, the, uh, the next one that I will post is interesting. It's an exam. I'm going to test you. <laughs> you better get ready for that. So by the end of August, I will post a problem which is an exam for you. I want to see how much physics you have learned. But I will still continue every week to post an art quiz. So, have a nice day.
enjoy, enjoy, enjoy this fantastic lunar eclipse, July 27, 28. Have a nice day, take care. And whether there will be clouds or whether there will be no clouds, of course, we will be friends.